Okay, this is amazing to see all these beautiful faces. Welcome, 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 everybody. Welcome, everyone joining us on Zoom tonight. Welcome, everyone joining us on Facebook Live. And welcome, everyone who will be watching this recording over the next week. Uh, welcome to our Sunday Goal Achievement Mastermind. I am your host, Mike DeLuca. Um, as always, this program uh, is brought to you by Integrative Wellness and Development, LLC. And it is in no way, shape, or form any other than something to educate, inspire, perspire, um, help give you new skills, perspectives, and resources. And tonight we have two incredible resources that I'm going to introduce in just a moment. Please remember that our programs are strictly educational. We do not intend or claim at any time to diagnose, prevent, or cure. Uh, we don't um, make any claims about you achieving any specific achievement, and uh, whether it's in uh, health or whether it's in business, we simply are providing you with some of the best tools and resources that we can. And tonight we have two amazing people, uh, and I'm really excited to introduce them to you. So uh, I am going to uh, bring up the PowerPoint for a sec, and uh, then I'm going to introduce uh, our folks. Tonight's program is called Hack the Weight Code. This episode is Hack the Weight Code, and we are really, really excited to bring our two guests uh, to join you tonight. Our two guests are known all over the world. Uh, certainly, uh, they have tremendous expertise, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. First, uh, we're very fortunate to have Dr. Christina Campbell. Dr. Christina Campbell is a board-certified emergency medicine and functional medicine physician. She's also certified in endocannabinoid medicine, and is a recognized expert in mitochondrial regeneration medicine. This is exciting stuff. Dr. Campbell has had decades of experience successfully treating a wide variety of conditions with significant success with autoimmune diseases like Crohn's disease, irritable bowel syndrome. She's currently focusing on root cause-based precision and regenerative medicine. I'm really, really interested in this and is having tremendous success helping clients who are struggling with healthy weight management through her unique process of genetic, cellular, hormonal assessments blended with education and proper systemic balancing. And in addition to Dr. Christina Campbell, we have Dr. Bruce Phillips. Dr. Bruce Phillips, is an accomplished chiropractic physician with over 32 years of clinical experience. Dr. Phillips has advanced certifications in functional medicine, whole food nutrition, advanced nutrition, herbal therapy, endocannabinoid system, laser therapy, energy medicine, advanced clinical training. He has vast experience working with thousands of patients for a variety of ailments with tremendous success. He's recently been asked to teach and mentor fellow practitioners on his practice protocols. He has spent his entire career researching health, wellness, and longevity for the betterment of his patients and colleagues. So uh, with that, welcome Dr. Christina Campbell. Welcome Dr. Bruce Phillips. Uh, really excited that you're here with us, and um, come say hello to our crew here. Okay, thank you, Michael. We really appreciate being invited uh, tonight, and we're excited to reach out to your audience. And, you know, weight is something that a lot of people think about this time of year, and we, we thought we would uh, focus on that initially. There are certainly other topics that we want to focus on in the future, but uh, so many people start these New Year's revolutions, as you call them, <laughs> instead of resolutions, because they cycle back around every single year with yeah. the same thought process with little action steps being taken in the process. And so our goal is to bring some sanity to it and uh, bring some knowledge to it, because uh, we always say when you know better, you do better. 
and uh, we want people to know better. So, in, in fact, they can do better in the near future. Yeah, perfectly said, Dr. Phillips. And it's so great to be here. Thank you, Michael, for such a uh, lovely introduction. I appreciate that. I'm very excited to share what um, Dr. Phillips and I have been working on together, um, collaborating with all of you. Um, you know, he mentioned weight being a big, a big issue for um, this time of year for a lot of people, but it's really an issue. Um, I think all, you know, obesity rates are, are just off the charts and not so much the problem of being overweight or being larger than you should be uh, more the problem that that is a signal. It's a sign that there's other things going wrong inside your body. And that's really what we want to focus on. And weight loss will come with all of the focus that we're talking about um, with the, the different areas of improvement that we focus on. So um, you will not only find weight loss with this program that we're launching out, but you'll find um, that you'll feel better, right? You'll find that um, things will be working better in your body. And that's really our goal. Our goal is underlying health um, and, and educating people on what they need to know in order to achieve that for themselves. So super excited to be here and to share with you all. I, you know, you, you mentioned something that I think was one of the things that really caught my attention when I was beginning to um, approach the two of you and learn from the two of you. And that was your focus is on the whole body. It's on the whole system and that your target and your goal is health. It's not reducing calories. It's not numbers on the scale. It's not, you know, burning calories. Um, it's really looking at the individual and, Looking at them genetically, or you know, organically, hormonally, physically, emotionally, mentally, the spiritually, you, you have an approach that I've never seen before, and that's looking at the entire person and helping them heal inside and and prosper inside, and then weight loss is a byproduct. Is that right? Yes, one hundred percent correct. Uh, it's so exciting that uh, Dr. Campbell and I are on the same wavelength. There's lots of times, and she can attest to this, that you end up butting heads with colleagues because mm -hmm. unfortunately in traditional medicine, we've compartmentalized healthcare. And, you know, you go to a cardiologist for your heart, you go to an endocrinologist for, you know, the endocrine system, et cetera, et cetera. You all know the different specialties. And really, we are this 100% functioning organism, and every system interacts, and there's no way to remove one system and focus on one system and expect to optimize health. And to find uh, somebody synergistic in that uh, thought process is a godsend. And so I just love the way that our minds meld together and the way that we're able to work together as a team, because exactly as you said, most people focus on the weight as the issue. And really, it's the symptom of an underlying issue. And our goal is to get at that underlying issue and that malfunction that's happening that has caused and enhanced the, the person's ability to store and maintain a unhealthy body weight. And so when we can get at that, then everything falls into place naturally. And it's not a struggle. It's not a frustration. It's not an ongoing problem. It's now been addressed at the root level as opposed to being circumvented by just focusing on weight and doing unnecessary procedures that really don't get a person healthy. Who have you seen that gets healthier after some sort of bariatric surgery? No, they're all miserable. <laughs> I've never met a person that feels better after a bariatric surgery because that is just one example of the many approaches that we have in healthcare to the symptom, not the underlying problem. 100%, 100% right. And I would also add that, um, and thank you, Michael, for um, sharing our approach of the whole cellular body, the entire um, environment or world that we really are as as a as an individual, but also the environment around us. So we, we bring that in as well. And um, you know, you could, if you look at the twin research, you can have twins that have the exact same genetics, the exact same code, but their bodies and their health problems are different 
because they're living different lives in different environments, different lifestyles, different experiences. And that's a big piece of the puzzle as well. So really important to understand not only that it's what's inside going on inside your body, but also in your environment and what you can control in your environment that can help you improve your health is pretty significant. And most people aren't aware of that. So we love to educate on that piece of the puzzle. And that's an easy solution if you understand what you're looking for and what your what your goals are. So, you know, <clears throat> the field of weight loss itself, this is a multi, multi-billion dollar business. And it's been a multi-billion dollar business for decades. If that's the case, then why are there still so many people overweight and so many people struggling with maintaining healthy weight and maintaining health in general. Why is that? Can well, I, I jump on that one? Sure, go ahead. <laughs> I think I think the biggest issue is that the education that's out there is incorrect or it's limited. It's it's focusing on a very small area rather than the whole picture. And I really think the whole picture is really where the importance is and understanding how the body works, how our systems are interrelated and how what we do in our lives affects how our health is. Yeah. And I think most of the approaches, again, as as I commented earlier, they focus just on weight loss. And at some point, our bodies are so infinitely smart that it will adapt. So if you cut calories, your bo body's metabolism is going to diminish. If you switch around your caloric intake, your body's physiology is going to adapt. You know, all these different things are adaptive. And unfortunately, our body is not stagnant. If it was, then all these approaches would work tremendously well. <laughs> but mm -hmm. but uh, again, when you when you go about things and not fixing the problem, then you're just creating another problem, which is why we get the typical yo-yoing of weight. Yes. There seems to be a lot of emotional issues wrapped around weight loss. Um why is that the case and what can people do about that? Because cutting the calories and jo joining the gym does not address at all what's going on deeper in the, on the emotional side of things. Well, this is an area I've studied extensively, probably for 25 plus years. And I always say that with things like this, like weight, we have this emotional thermostat. And, you know, we'll step on the scale, we see a certain number, and we're, we're okay with that number. Then it gets to a different number, and we're not so much okay. And now it kicks in, and we take some action, and then we get back okay, and we get a little lax in our action. So we have this emotional thermostat. And the reason why that is, is we've equated a certain number subconsciously as being acceptable. Acceptable in a clothing size or acceptable in a functionality way, whatever it is, it's acceptable. And we never really look at what is the level that's healthy for me. And we've created this limiting belief that we can never get below a certain level. You know, they'll say, you know, I'll talk to people that are overweight and they'll say, well, I haven't been that weight since I was 20, you know, or something like that. And so now they've created this limiting belief that they can never get back there again. And until we address that, they will self-sabotage repetitively, even if they're on the perfect program. If we don't address this piece, they're going to self-sabotage and they're not going to stay on any program for any length of time. So this emotional component is so important. And getting to the root cause of it, you know, it can go back to childhood when they were you know, uh, bullied about their weight in, in high school or middle school or anything like that, that has created an emotional scratch in their, their belief system. And now they're stuck. They're stuck in a, in a pattern that's going to support that they're fitting that model that they perceive that they should be. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I would say that you know, our, our, our minds are really interesting and our bodies are really interesting because our brain, what, what we tell ourselves becomes true. 
our, our bodies cannot tell the difference between what we tell ourselves and what is reality. So that's where affirmation statements come in. If you've ever heard of affirmation statements saying positive things to yourself every day, as opposed to negative things, those things work and visualization. These are, these are different topics that have been talked about, um, over the last several decades, um, as ways of getting yourself to a goal. But the reason those things work is because our bodies, our cells respond to what we tell ourselves. So if we are in a negative emotional space and we're looking in the mirror and we're telling ourselves negative things and we're thinking negative things about ourselves, we're reinforcing that. So you have to break that emotional cycle too around weight. You have to Begin to love yourself for where you are, who you are in this moment now. And you have to begin visualizing you, where you are wanting to go. So you need to be telling your body, right, what, what your goal is. Seeing that in your mind's eye, visualizing that in your mind's eye, that health, that whatever that size is, you know, um, whatever that looks like for you and what is healthy for you. And again, establishing what is truly healthy for you is a big step too, because many people are actually, you know, there are eating disorders and there are body dysmorphic disorders where people think that they are um, an unhealthy weight, but they're actually too thin, right? They're, they don't have enough muscle. They're too thin. So there's different versions of that emotional issue, but all of those things need to be addressed. And each individual that comes to the table is going to have their own story, their own history, their own emotional baggage. And we all have it. You can't get to, you can't, you can't get through life without developing some emotional baggage over time. That's just life. So, but learning how to um, efficiently and properly deal with those emotions, work through those emotions and how to use your brain as a tool to push your body and yourself and your, and your agenda, right? Whatever your agenda for yourself is forward to get yourself where you need to be from a health perspective, from a weight perspective. Um, and, and that, that is one of the most beautiful things about our brains is that we can really use them as a tool. A good little so, test real quick, a good little yeah. test that uh, the listeners can do is if they're saying in their brain that they're their ideal body weight, whatever that is, and they get that little quiver in their heart or their gut or whatever, they know that that's a barrier, you know, just feeling that uncertainty and not feeling excitement when they say that, that is the shift that you are not looking for. And so even, you know, you've got to bring the positive emotion with the affirmation and, uh, and just paying attention to your body is so important and the emotions that come up when you say these affirmations because part of getting healthy is realizing where you are right now so that you can set a course a path a direction to get to where you want to be now you mentioned that everybody everybody and everybody's body <laughs> are unique and their relationship with food and uh, hormones and weight gain, weight loss for each individual. It's an individual journey. So, you know, all of these approaches that it's one size fits all, one pill fits all, one, how, how is your program different? And how do you address the fact that we really are uniquely different and um, we need to be uniquely measured and have a custom approach created for us because we're different. Well, everybody wants to jump in at a different level. So we believe we have carved a path that people can put their toe in the water or people can dive in all the way, you know, the, the old polar plunge type concept. Uh, and so we have, have a path for everybody to get involved and uh, get a total assessment of some sort and uh, do it in a price range that's comfortable for them. And part of that is, like I say, like we already said, knowing where you are. And wait, if weight's the symptom, we have to somehow figure out what the problem is. So we can't just step on a scale anymore and know what to do with you. 
We have to look deeper. We have to dig deeper and figure out where the challenge is. Is it digestion? Is it the endocrine system? Is it uh, some other system in the body that's not functioning optimally, that's allowing us to metabolize at the proper rate, digest efficiently, absorb effectively, utilize our calories properly, and get away from this fat storing mode. You know, the goal with weight loss is you want to be energy inefficient, okay? You want to be burning calories in your sleep. You want to be burning calories when you're relaxing. And of course, you want to be burning calories when you're active. But you do that through a course of, of calculated changes and health enhancing steps that get you to that point. You don't get there overnight, but that's the goal, that you are no longer storing fat unnecessarily for a rainy day. Because we don't live in an environment where we have a rainy day, most of us, and we can't get food. And our bodies are designed to live in a feast or famine type situation, but we don't typically have a famine type situation. We could walk into the grocery store and have a plethora of food choices and, and load up our cart and, and walk out. So we need to switch our metabolism and switch our efficiency into a different direction and, of course, enhance our health so that it's sustainable. That's the biggest problem with most programs. They are just absolutely not sustainable. They're miserable and, and suffering. And, you know, just like some people, they teach that you should sacrifice to get rich. We don't want you starving to lose weight. We want you eating and eating properly to have a healthy, ongoing, sustainable life and weight management program. Absolutely. And, you know, Mike, you bring up a really good point because so many, and, and as Dr. Phillips said as well, so many of the programs out there are one size fits all. And we know that that's just not accurate. That's not how things should be. We need a personalized precision approach. And every single person in this world is beautifully and uniquely created. And as I already pointed out, even twins who have the exact same genetics have different experiences. So the way that we kind of tap into what is personal for you, for each person that joins our program, is we test, we offer testing for genetics, first of all, so that we can know how your code is built. How is your body built? What is your computer code? What is the best environment for you, the way that you are built? What is the best food choice? What is the best, um, I mean, any number of things. What are the best ways for you um, to approach your own body and the way that it's built to maximize that. And then on top of that, we use a series of questionnaires and other types of information gathering that allows us to determine specifically for the person in front of us what, what is the biggest issue for them? Where, where is the root cause? What is the first layer of that onion that needs to be peeled back? And that is really what Dr. Phillips and I both specialize in functional medicine really is exactly that, right? Functional medicine is, is a functional approach to a functional body, not a system, not a single organ, not a single issue, but the whole picture. And I have one of the things that I have learned coming out of conventional medicine and into this functional medicine space is that you can have 20 people with the same diagnosis code, that ICD-10 code, you know, that the insurance company needs to pay your doctor or the hospital or whatever. I mean, that's really just a coding system. It has nothing to do with what really is the root cause for that symptom grouping. Really a diagnosis is a symptom grouping, right? And when that symptom grouping is figured out and there's a certain number of tests that have gone wrong, we know that we can determine that that's what you have and that's the diagnosis code. In functional medicine, we don't need diagnosis codes. We just need to know where is the root cause? What is, what a layer of that onion needs to be peeled back first. Where are the bigger issues for you and how, where, where can we get started? And the other thing that Dr. Phillips and I do too, is we work with the person in front of us. We will give options because I know personally, I know that you may not be able to do all the things that I think you should do. If I was in your shoes, I would do this first. Well, maybe that first thing that I would do is not something that you can handle yet. You're not ready for that but maybe two, three, and four might be something that you can handle. So we come up with several um, options, right? 
a lot of different educational pieces. And that's really what this course is about is teaching you all these different pieces that you can put in place for yourself and offering you this personalized lab testing, this personalized symptom gathering information and some, um, some feedback on, you know, you personally, not just everyone who takes this course is going to do the same thing. You're all going to do the same thing. And you're going to, have a, you're not going to all, right. You're, it's all going to fail because nobody's, nobody can do all the same thing and be successful. It just, it makes zero sense um, with the way our bodies are, are made. Um, so I hope that answers the question, right? How, how do we get at that personal um, individuality of each person that comes to this course, this program? Well, I've, I've been through a lot of weight loss programs. I've not encountered one before that went that deep into um, my body. And certainly you mentioned genetics. You know, we've been taught over the years that our genes dictate and influence us. And we're sort of, you know, the, the passenger caught on the train uh, our genetic train, and we don't really have a choice about it. You know, I have I have these genes, right? Um, but what you're saying is um, we don't have to be a victim of our, quote, genetics, and that, in fact, we can impact our genetics, we can impact our hormones, we can impact our behavior with the right support and turn this around to where we can have a have better body health overall but the weight loss comes with that uh, that's not very popular yet uh amongst the scientific community and certainly not the weight loss community that you can affect your genetics or or work as a partner with them so uh, how does that work there's two aspects to genetics and most people have heard about genetics but then there's another term called epigenetics yeah and epigenetics is basically your lifestyle. And what we've learned is that you have 100% capability to turn on and turn off different genes, including genes that make you susceptible to certain diseases. You can switch them off and they do not express themselves any longer. And so we do that by uh, you know, eating right. We do that by breathing right. We do that by exercising properly. We do that by drinking properly. We do that by all of our different lifestyle choices. We have the ability to turn on and turn off genes. Some genes you turn on and turn off. Some genes operate more like a dimmer switch and we dial down and dial up. And so we have that complete capacity to uh, affect the outcome of our genetic expression over time. So it's not a, a blueprint that we're stuck with. You know, we can just like our house, tear down a wall here and put up a new wall there and repaint and recarpet and refloor and all the different things as trends change and have a better expression of a previously dysfunctional gene. So that's the beauty of epigenetics. And it was, was, Interestingly enough, discovered by a, a PhD that was teaching at a, a college to medical students, and, and uh, it was so unpopular at the time that he lost his tenured uh, professorship at the university and is now out on his own uh, having a much better life teaching about epigenetics. But it's just interesting how slow we are to accept new concepts in in healthcare and people definitely in the beginning ostracize these new concepts and and become kind of villainized and then after a while the the curve tends to be 20 years believe it or not michael <laughs> that before we accept one of these radical shifts of understanding because that whole gene thing was just so popular for so long and we thought for sure we had the answer to to affect every single health outcome and decision moving forward. And then we just didn't quite have enough genes to make that concept play out. <laughs> you know, I have a lot of thoughts in my head right now. <laughs> I saw, um, I was looking at you waiting. I'm like, I, I know I'm not, which one do I start with? Um, <laughs> 
You know, there's, and Dr. Phillips brings up a really good point. And I will tell you, it's about 30 years before the Nobel Prize winning research in medicine over the last five years will hit medical school books. It's at least 30 years. I mean, that's the length of my career. <laughs> so I, if, you know, if you're not working with a physician who knows what has been the last 10 years worth of Nobel Prize um, winning information and in medicine, then you're really missing out. <laughs> you're really missing out because you're, you're missing the new, um, the new things that we're learning. Um, and even in that time, endocannabinoid medicine, which Dr. Phillips and I are both um, passionate about, um, the endocannabinoid system wasn't discovered until the late 1990s and wasn't really completely elucidated. It still isn't. We're still doing active research on it and trying to continue to understand it better. Um, but it's a it's a 2000s plus moving forward information. Quantum medicine, which is really where I think everything is heading, right? Um, quantum information, we are more light than we are matter. If you don't understand that, then you're missing most of what matters, right? That's what I tell my patients. Um, you have to understand light. You have to understand how your body's made the energetic, energetic principles of our bodies, the magnetic principles of our bodies and the things that are around us electronically and how that affects our, 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 ourselves as well. Um, you know, there's just, there's, there's so much, um, there's so much that you can do, but when you understand your genetic code, your specific code, and as Dr. Phillips said, yes, you can turn it on and off. And that's super important because that is what we use. So I always show my patients kind of like the Venn diagram, right? If this is your genetics and this is your environment, the area where they overlap, that's really where the power is. Understanding what your code is, is only is part of it, but understanding what that means for you. And what you can do that will be helpful. And it also helps to save you money, frankly, um, because if you are the person who has a lot of gut issues, but you have a normal fut too, you're not the person who has to take probiotics every single day. So why waste your money? On the other hand, if you have methylation deficiencies and detox issues, then those would be the areas that we would want to focus on. And again, what I've really seen in my practice is you can have perfect example with Crohn's disease. Um, and I'll speak to that because that is something I was diagnosed with once and no longer have mind you. Um, but you can have 20 people with that same diagnosis and the reason the underlying root cause for them to get to that symptom cluster can be completely different for every single one of those people. So to have a recipe medicine, um, where everyone gets the same thing is really conventional medicine thinking, but I see that also in functional medicine. So even people who get it, who understand the functionality and the connectiveness of our bodies are still practicing recipe medicine and it still doesn't make any sense. It really has to be for the person in front of you um, to maximize what you need to do, what, what is best for you specifically, you, Michael, you, Jocelyn, you, Dr. Phillips, right? Um, and it's different person to person. And I think that is the biggest thing that's getting missed, right? Um, is, is understanding that when I call it personalized precision medicine, um, is really where it's at. <laughs> you, you mentioned, you mentioned cost, right? Yes. Um, you know, I, I, I will stand up in, in meetings and say, hi, my name is Mike and I'm a carboholic. And um, I've had people, I've had people call me Omi One Cannoli and <laughs> the Delhi Lama because they know my, my thing with carbs, the, my cravings with carbs. And, you know, there's all kinds of products out there to curb your appetite. But to me, there's a real difference between appetite or, and hung, hunger and specific kinds of cravings. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that you devote an entire section of your new masterclass coming up on understanding that cravings are different than just appetite. Yeah. They are. They feed nutritional deficiencies. They feed emotional deficiencies. Um, we get, it stimulates carbs, for example, stimulate certain neurological transmitters and allow us to experience certain emotions. And so when we're depressed, we might crave a certain thing that gives us 
that emotion and, and makes us temporarily feel a little more happy. Um, we might crave a certain food that has protein or has magnesium. Magnesium is a common thing that people crave, which is in dark chocolate. Um, so there's, there's lots of things that people will crave to fill a void, whether it be chemically or emotionally in their body. So it's not just uh, a thing where I've got to eat carbs. It's more of a thing where your body wants something or your brain wants something. And if we can, again, figure that out and replace it with something healthy, then that craving goes away. Uh, my classic example for my wife, I was still in in professional school, so I was trying to figure it out, but didn't have the knowledge base at the time. During my wife's first pregnancy, she just craved cheeseburgers. I mean, couldn't get enough cheeseburger. I mean, I'd be going out at midnight to get a cheeseburger. <laughs> And she ended up in preeclampsia. And then we figure out, oh, my gosh, she didn't have enough protein in her body. And so she needed that protein. That bo that fetus was sucking up every ounce of protein in her body. And she's kind of like you. If she tends to eat, she's modified her diet then, now, but we were in our 20s. But And, and she tends to crave carbs. I tend to eat more protein. And so she was massively deficient in protein as a pregnant woman. And so she couldn't get enough of cheeseburgers. So that, that's exciting. You're, you're giving us the opportunity to not just understand the what, but the why. Exactly. Right. You know, another interesting chemical um, messenger system is our microbiome. And, you know, a lot of people don't understand what that is. But we actually have more microbial DNA in our host, in our bodies, than we do human DNA, much more. And we, it's kind of like, if you think about it, building a corporation, you, you get big enough as a, you get it big enough as a business that you begin outsourcing certain things for efficiency sake, right? For, for bottom dollar, for bottom line, for efficiency to be able to produce whatever it is that you're building. Our bodies are the same way and we developed over millennia. And as we got more and more sophisticated, at some point we pulled bacteria into our cells. Those are now called mitochondria. Those are our cellular batteries. Those were actual little bacteria before that were that we brought in to outsource our energy production. Interestingly, right? We also have bugs growing on every orifice inside and out. Um, any, any place that has contact with the outside has bugs. Um, bacteria, viruses, fungus, parasites, all of those things. And a certain number of those things, all of those things are normal. So a lot of people get really excited about parasites. That's really scary to a lot of people, but a certain number of parasites are actually normal part of our microbiome. And when our microbiome is out of whack, it gives improper signaling to our brain. A perfect example, because I have a lot of, I work with a lot of chronic um, Lyme and mold uh, biotoxin illness patients. And a lot of these people have chronic candida, which is yeast in their gut and yeast likes sugar. It likes it a lot, a whole lot. It wants it all day long because it doesn't want to die. And if you starve it of that carbohydrate load, it will die off. And in fact, it's uncomfortable when it begins to die off because it also creates symptoms in you. You feel fluey, achy, yucky, right? So it will send chemical signatures to your brain saying, hey, go eat that chocolate. Hey, go eat that candy bar. Hey, have that cannoli. Hey, have that. I need that. I need you to go get that. I need you to go get that. And it will signal you. And then if it starts to die off, that signaling will actually get stronger. And you'll feel like crap until you go eat that cannoli. And then all of a sudden that cannoli is like the most amazing thing you've ever had. And you feel so <laughs> good afterwards. And that reinforces it emotionally because now you feel great. Of course, your weight isn't any better, but still you feel better physically and mentally and emotionally. But there's a reason for that. And it's not even, I mean, in some ways it, it may not be your fault, right? You may, ha you may have drivers in the driver's seat that you don't know have hijacked your vehicle and put a gun to your head, if you will. Um, so you have to know yourself and how you need, you have to know how to, how to intervene with that and how to do that in a way that is comfortable for you, but in a way that's effective too, is, you know, long-term. So those are some of the things that I see as well, um, is when our microbiome is out of whack, it gives us the wrong chemical signatures. And then 
it disrupts what we're supposed to be in a symbiotic relationship with these guys. And, and we're not, we're, we're out of whack, out of balance. Well, we're, um, we're at the halfway point and uh, I want to open it up. I could sit here and talk all night about this stuff, but I want to open it up because I know that um, viewers that are joining us have questions. So uh, folks, if one at a time, if you would raise your hand, uh, if you have a question for uh, Dr. Campbell and Dr. Phillips, we will take you one at a time and allow them to illuminate you uh, and help you hack the weight code.com. Write that down, by the way, hack the weight code.com. We're going to be talking about that uh, in a minute, but uh, write that down. And who is our first person who's going to ask a question? Let's be brave. Here we go. Janine, go ahead and unmute yourself. Thank you, Mike. Thank you both Dr. Phillips and Dr. Campbell. You know, I've kind of had this intuition for a long time. I tend to be a visionary person and have been fighting against the input. You know, if you're overweight, you're a bad person, you have no self-discipline and that sort of thing. So I really, really appreciate what you're doing. And my joke is nobody's ever seen a calorie uh, a calorie in a 12 year old boy is very different than a calorie in me. So, um, you know, they've seen subatomic particles, et cetera, but nobody's ever actually seen a calorie. I did want to introduce something else that I discovered in my own journey. And that is, I know this is going to sound kind of woo woo, but past life influence, mm -hmm. because in my own work on myself, I discovered that I actually in a recent lifetime passed away in a labor camp, a Nazi labor camp. And if you've seen pictures of the bodies, you know, they just, they were getting a potato water maybe once a week or something to drink. And so when I realized that, I realized that deprivation, which is the usual thing, you know, either you're deprived of carbs or deprived of calories or only eat one meal a day or whatever the, the deprivation is, was not going to work because that was subconsciously, the body was saying, no, we can't go there. And the protection even against that evil influence, you know. So um, I so appreciate that you guys are, are going and pioneering this and you have my support 100%. Thank you. Well, thank you, Janine, for your input. I appreciate that. There's actually an entire branch of medicine called uh, um, um, generational epigenetics. Um, so, you know, in the Bible, and, I, you know, I'm, I was brought up Catholic, so that's just my paradigm. But uh, so I'm not pushing religion, but in, in, in any way, but you know, in the Bible, it says the sins of the father are, are bared upon the sons. Well, there's some truth in that, in that how we lived our lives before we had children affects our children, how our, what happened in our, the lives of our, our parents, our grandparents, our grandparents, grandparents, those things do affect us 100%. They do on many, many levels emotionally as well. And if, that those emotions aren't managed by the adult by for example by me before i've had a child my child may inherit some of that emotional baggage um and i believe that um i i have seen um i've seen several patients who've gone through something not the same thing as you but different types of experiences that made no sense to them whatsoever but they were saying to me you know dr campbell i just have this really weird story that keeps coming to my mind and I don't know where it's coming from. And they would go back and I would encourage them to go back and learn more about their relatives and their generation to generation and see if there was something back there. And sure enough, a couple of them found where it had been sourced from. And then we worked, used some emotional techniques. Um, there's one that I really like called emotional freedom technique. Um, it's a fairly easy one to do, um, and it's a lovely process. So it's actually an enjoyable process. And a lot of times that can be um, a way that people can work through those things. So, yeah, I can see that you're familiar with that technique. Awesome. <laughs> I just wanted to add one other thing. You know, when you mentioned the generational, my grandfather left Russia when he was 13 during the last pogrom. He was illiterate. He moved to South Africa. He carried a mattress around on his back all day till he sold it and then could make another mattress. He eventually became very wealthy and his children went to Cambridge and Oxford and that kind of thing. But you um, you can see the influence in my mother 
of from him having gone through starving times where we had to eat whatever was on our plate, the whole amount, adult portions, couldn't leave the table because there were children starving and wherever they were starving at that time, Abyssinia or who knows where. So, you know, it's not only the emotional, but it's the habitual. Yes. We never drank water. If something happened in the mouth, it was you ate, you know, so to have to unlearn all this stuff, it's it's a big project. And you guys are forerunners in this. It's wonderful. Thank you. It's a huge project, and I'm glad you brought that up because uh, these are exactly what we were talking about earlier when we talk about these belief systems that get entrenched in our subconscious, and most of them and in our childhood, you know, finish your dinner, you know, uh, or you can't leave the table until your plate is clean, all those types of things, or you don't get dessert unless you <laughs> eat all your food, you know, whatever the, the case may be. And, and the thing I love about the, the training that I've had is so many people are not, not aware, even aware to begin to wrap their brains around these subconscious emotional limiting patterns. We call them subconscious emotional memory overrides, let alone think about what their ancestors did that transferred a negative energy into you. And, and so uh, we're, we're able to do a technique that even gets at your subconscious. And you don't have to know where those scratches in your brain occurred and when they occurred and why they occurred, but it allows us to treat them in a priority fashion and remove those so that you can uh, reach your health goals, your every goal, honestly, so that uh, these beliefs are no longer a problem for you. Uh, and we all have them, just like Dr. Campbell said, you know, there's no way you get to this point in life and you don't have one. Well, great. Thanks, Janine, for that question. Uh, Samari, you're next and then Jocelyn. Thank you, Mike. Um, and thank you, Drs. Uh, Campbell and Phillips. So um, I, I, what I'm intrigued by is your understanding of this multiplicity of um, causes and then being able to prioritize them. And I've had a lot of childhood traumas, childhood into young adulthood. However, and, and I've worked on them assiduously uh, and I'm still carrying extra bulk. Um, and so the, my question though is, the story goes, my mother used to tell this story. I was born a month premature, weighed five pounds, and rejected all milk, breast milk, formula. Uh, and in fact, what my mother says is that I vomited everything I ate. Well, obviously it wasn't everything because I'm still here. But, um, but you know, there, there was this intense... Uh, vomiting reaction to a majority of what what seemed to be, you know, um, what what would be a good food for a baby, and so of course, you know, that raises a lot of questions in my mind about digestion. But you know, here I am, seven decades later, could that still be an underlying factor? And where would it be in terms of priority? Um, so that that's my question for you. It's hard to say the priority without doing sure. some testing, but uh, certainly it is something that, that we would want to take into consideration. There's uh, different processes that have to happen for you to properly colonate your intestine and for that intestine to start working. And you got to remember that uh, your intestines are a major part of your immune system in addition to being a major part of your digestive system. And which, you know, brings us full circle. Every system is interdependent on another system. And so that's where it becomes hard to just say, oh, you initially were born and brought in with a digestive pro problem. You know, it could have been, liver or pancreas not secreting appropriate enzymes. And so the body couldn't break down the food. And so it regurgitated the food. You know, there's lots of issues that could be part of this symptom complex. 
that uh, we would love to dive into you with. But again, we would need more more background. But, you know, that's a long mm -hmm. time ago. Good that you've survived that. So that's great. <laughs> and uh, and we definitely would would love to help you get to the root cause of that so that you can uh, achieve a higher level of health in the future. I survived it, but it, it it's that, you know, the survive, having survived such a tumultuous first year, you know, the ingrained, what did you call it? The subconscious emotional memory. Emotional memory, memory is, override, yes. You know, hold, hold on, hold on to the weight because yeah. whatever it was, yeah, yeah. So you've survived, you, know, you haven't have thrived. Yeah, in that way. <laughs> In, yeah. in the in the healthy weight management way. Mm -hmm. It's it sounds a bit to me like you you know that that's an emotional thing that you still hold on to. Um, and of course, every time your parents have told the story again, and of course it was traumatic for them. So it was a big thing in their life. They love you. They wanted you to be healthy and strong. And it wasn't that way. Right. You came early. You were not as healthy as they wanted. And they tell that story over and over because it's their trauma too. Right. But when they tell yeah, you that right. they reinforce that emotional piece, that, um, questioning, um, for you too. So, um, that's that kind of a cultural, uh, paradigm, like a, a conversation that's going back and forth and reinforcing it for each other. Um, are your parents still with us? No, no. no. Um, so, I mean, I, I would work on that. I do think I would work on that. I will say um, I have this, and maybe this is instinctual, maybe not, but I have this thought that perhaps, um, you know, forgiving that little baby inside of you too, right? Having a certain amount mm -hmm. of forgiveness for um, not being as developed at coming out early and you weren't developed. When you come, when babies come out early, their digestive tract is not developed completely, um, many of those premature children do have those kinds of digestive issues in the beginning because their digestive tract is still developing where normally it happens inside of mom with placenta, right. To feed baby. So that's not an issue. Now, all of a sudden you're having to take food in oh. before you're really ready, right. In order to survive. And so that puts your, as a, as a premature child, that puts a lot on you, um, on your body to have to do to get to get to survival. Um, and Dr. Phillips brings up a, a really beautiful point. Um, and part of my questionnaires that conversations that I have with my patients um, during their initial intake, when I do a, a in-depth um, my in-depth programs with them, a lot of what I ask about is not only your birth situation, but also how was mom during your, mm -hmm. as you were a fetus, what was the pregnancy like for mom? Were, was there emotional things going on? Were there issues with husband? Were there issues with um, whatever, right? Like what, what are all the things <laughs> that happened even as you are inside of mom? Because the, that's the beginning of your life. Life, I truly believe that life happens at conception. Um, one of the Nobel Prize winning things is the zinc spark. So I don't know if you've heard of this, but at time of conception, zinc molecules come across and there's a huge blast of energy. And I believe that that's the wow. time of conception where um, the soul attaches. Now, I can't prove that. Um, I will tell you if that interests you at all, um, go read, there's a book called um, Your Spark is Light uh, by Dr. Courtney Hunt. Mm -hmm. You can get it off of her website for free. Um, and she goes into the quantum biology of that, which is really very interesting. But m point being that you had a shorter time inside of mom than you were supposed to have, or you should have had. So you're kind of deficient, like you didn't get that. So in a way that might mm -hmm. be part of it to work on from an emotional perspective. Um, and as far as the digestive tract, could you still have issues? I mean, typically people have developed um, all the different parts of their digestive tract by the time seven decades later. Um, but that doesn't mean that you don't have an issue there. So if you're having digestive issues, there are tests that can be done to look closer into that. Just depends on all the other things um, that are going on with you. Um, and so I would agree with Dr. Phillips. I would love to have a full 
all the information to better answer that question, but it's a good question and one you should seek an answer to. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Very helpful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Samari. Um, I want to, I'm going to have one more uh, question. I want to just take a quick moment. I had mentioned the website, packtheweightcode.com. I wanted to give you all a sneak peek because that is going live. And um, I think you'll find it very, very interesting. But this is uh, this is the site that you will be going to if you go to hacktheweightcode.com. And um, you're going to see there that uh, Dr. Campbell and Dr. Phil just released a really incredible guidebook. It's called Hack the Code for Weight Management. And um, you're going to be able, uh, our viewers here, the folks in our community, you're going to be able to get this book. Which... Whoops. Uh-oh. You're muted, Michael, for some reason. Yeah, yeah we're back. Having a, little, we having a little uh, issue here. Um, you're going to be able to get access to this guidebook. Um, Dr. Campbell and Dr. Phillips were generous enough to allow us to offer this to you. Um, and I'm going to have to repin everybody here. So give me a sec to add the pins. And we're all pinned. So um, we're going to be able to have you have access to this book, which will be eventually going on sale. I think it's going to be on sale for $14.95. Um, but you're going to have access to it for free. Um, if you go to hacktheweightcode.com and you go and register in there, uh, I'm going to try to have you see it again. We might get thrown out again, but I think it's important that we show you that. We'll just try to go quick here. So when you get there, when you get to the site, before it throws you out, <laughs> go fill out where it says download the free guidebook, put your name, email address, hit instant access, and you're going to be able to have a link sent to you you're going to be able to download this book uh, prior to it going on sale to the rest of the world. Uh, you're going to be able to do that. So please take a moment and go to hacktheweightcode.com. And when you get there, you'll be able to download that book. I actually uh, I was given the opportunity to show you a quick sneak peek. Um, so let me, again, before we get thrown out here, let me... Uh, Yeah. Take a look at these topics. Understanding and maximizing your code. Understanding and maximizing hormones. It was even spelled correctly. Understanding your biochemistry. Designing a balanced and nutritious diet. What? Effective herbs and supplements. Incorporating effective exercise routines. Hydration for weight management the role of sleep in weight management. Could you lose sleep? Could you could you lose weight in your sleep versus losing sleep in your weight? Uh-huh. Uh, and managing stress levels for sustainable weight loss. And then what do I do now? So you're going to have access to all of that incredible stuff for free if you go to hacktheweightcode.com and uh, put your name and uh, email address in there. Um, In addition, Dr. Campbell and Dr. Phillips created these really cool emails because it's not enough just to send you a book, but um, they really like holding your hand and guiding you through the education process. So you're going to be getting an email uh, every few days once you've uh, signed up for the guidebook, and they're going to kind of reinforce a principle or two just to help you get the most out of that guidebook. 
So again, if you go to hacktheweightcode.com, you're going to be able to do that. Uh, this will be on, you know, this will be shown on Facebook Live. It'll be on uh, my Facebook page as well. So if you if you forget it, I'll be posting hacktheweightcode.com all over the place. Uh, so uh, let's get back to our Q and A here. Um, Jocelyn, you had your golden hand up, so you are on. Hi, Dr. Campbell and Dr. Phillips. I am really uh, impressed that you were able to integrate so many dimensions of the human, I say, um, uh, size into a uh, weight management uh, program. Um, I'm particularly, in, I, and I can see the complementarity of what you're bringing. Dr. Kimball, you, you talked about that uh, it's not only uh, the food, but also the, the environment. The environment has an effect. You, Dr. Phillips, you touch on uh, beliefs, the limiting pattern of beliefs. And I found interesting the idea that I cannot get back to my way that I have at 20 because of, of a limiting belief. But those two elements, why I'm bringing those, because I, and I don't know what's the technique that you work at the subconscious, because I facilitate uh, a lot of consultation with Psyche. Uh, and I'm also uh, an expert in, uh, in dealing with toxic uh, personalities. The thing is, in the two cases, many of the people coming with me, it's obvious that having been exposed to toxic relationship, and I, it could be toxic food, toxic media, toxic, have developed chronic disease and degenerative disease and uh, some maybe overweight as well and all of that. And uh, as I'm facilitating that, I realize also that working at the subconscious is incredibly powerful because 90% of our time we are running on the subconscious and we don't know. So therefore, if this is the case, the, the 5% where you're talking about with affirmation, with visualization, which are all about the conscious. Now, I'm curious to know, what is this technique that you're using where you work at the subconscious? Because I'm kind of uh, uh, looking for resources for these people coming to me when it comes to their health. The purpose of my the approach I'm using is more about working out those beliefs and replacing them with more constructive beliefs and uh, moving forward and not going back to the past. However, there are some, as I said, some uh, effects of being exposed for so long. And how do you and can you help with these kinds of factors when they come to you? Because I have, I have women with cancer now, with um, lupus, with uh, autoimmune disease, uh, art, arthritic problem, all kinds of problems as a result of that combined with a belief, a limiting belief that is exposing them to that kind of toxic. Uh, or hey, let, let's, let's, so let, I'm, let's, I'm gonna let that to you because yeah. I'm curious. Let's let them you answer your do. question. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, uh, that's why we tend to shy away from these labels uh, because they bring their own baggage with them. So a label of obesity, a label of cancer, a label of autoimmune disease, they all bring you down and they don't lift you up and they don't enhance the healing process. And so one of the rules I have in my practice is you are not your condition. <laughs> okay, I understand you have this diagnosis, but we're not going to talk about it. I, I know it. I have it in my charts. I don't need to be, doesn't need to be reiterated ever. And so we talk about then replacing that, as Dr. Campbell alluded to, with what you want to become. And then we work on all of the things that got sucked into your subconscious when somebody labeled you with that diagnosis. And to answer your question, the technique I use is called bioenergetic synchronization technique. And so it allows me to communicate with their subconscious because as you say, it's not 90% of the time, it's 100% of the time that 90% of your brain is working subconsciously to run you and to orchestrate all of this physiology that happens. We would crash and burn if we had to think about all of the millions of billions of things that are happening every second of every day. So it's the 90% of our brain that 100% of the time is running us and keeping us alive and keeping us functioning, 
keeping us alive when we're asleep, waking us up when we're done being at rest, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so that technique allows physiology to shift because we now have eliminated that unnecessary belief pattern. And, and here's the thing that most people don't realize is you adopt a belief pattern to get through a stressful situation. But once that stressful situation is over, we have to then realize consciously or subconsciously that that pattern is no longer necessary. So we use the example of running from a bear. You know, if a bear is in the room, it's okay to have a heightened blood pressure, a heightened uh, pulse rate, a he heightened respiration rate, a decreased digestive response, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But if we just perceive in our subconscious brain that a bear is in the room and that bear can be uh, a tax bill we can't pay, a relationship that's failing, you get the point, okay? Then all of a sudden, we still have that physiological response to all those things. But here's the key. A thought should never change our physiology if we're healthy. It should never change our physiology if we're healthy. But yet we think about weight and our heart sinks because we know we failed at it 20 times in the past. And again, you get the idea. And so we have to eliminate all of those patterns that have been there that have prevented people from succeeding and progressing and choosing the right action steps uh, in the past to getting them to a future new health level, a future new functioning level, a future new mental clarity. So they don't have these demons that you're talking about uh, bombarding their subconscious. Yeah. Excellent. I am. Um, Thank you, doctor. You know, I, I can't remember if it's Confucius who says this, but it, there's a, a quote that I like to remind my patients of. Um, if you're looking into the past, you're more likely to be depressed. If you're focused on the future, you're more likely to be anxious. And if you're living in the present, in the now, you're more likely to be at peace. And I think that it's a very simplified thing. And of course, that's not the whole picture, but it it is also quite profound, right? Um, and when we have traumas in our past, and I, I have a lot of trauma in my past, so I can speak to this from a personal level, as well as a practitioner, when we're focused on even sometimes just trying to get through those things and counseling and talking about it again, relives that trauma. You know, Dr. Phillips talked about the bear, but the bear in the room, I mean, a lot of people, there's a lot of literature and great research that shows the connection between um, childhood trauma, uh, uh, um, uh, emotional trauma and autoimmunity it's, there's a direct connection. Um, there's a direct connection between childhood trauma, um, and depression, anxiety, ADHD, all of those things. Um, and there's reasons for that. There's physiologic reasons for that. And there's emotional reasons for that. Um, and I think you have to tap into all of that, but when you're talking about the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous systems, which is really what Dr. Phillips is talking about when he's talking about the bear and being afraid of the bear and you need to be afraid of the bear. The whole point of having a fight or flight response or a sympathetic nervous system response is to save your life. It's an innate feature that came with us when we, because we used to live outside barefoot and naked and we had bears in our, you know, we had animals that would show up and attack us and we had to be able to survive that. But once you get back to the meadow, you have to be able to get back into that parasympathetic, relax, recover, digest, um, space. And the problem with the way our society is now is we are constantly bombarded with one more piece of that stress puzzle. One more thing that keeps us in a fight or flight state. And quite frankly, physiologically, you cannot lose weight. If you are living in fight or flight, you can't, it's, it's physically impossible. You have to be able to get into a parasympathetic dominant state. And the interesting thing as well is, is that whole system of sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Those two nervous systems are housed in the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is a huge 
uh, nerve that comes out of the brain and is the major highway of information between every cell in our body and our brain. So it sends signals from our brain to our body and it absorbs information from our body and sends it back to our brain. Um, but that's where it's all housed. And so anything that's impeding the vagus nerve, anything that's impeding your ability to get back into a parasympathetic nervous system dominant state is really going to impact your emotions. It's going to impact your ability to be healthy, your metabolism, your thyroid function. I mean, just on and on and on digestion. The vagus nerve is the major nerve between the brain and digestion. There's a reason why when we get stressed out, we have stomach aches especially kids, right? Kids will tell you my stomach hurts. And as a mom, you will learn, is that because they ate something bad or do I need to ask are the, how they're feeling? How are you feeling? Did something happen at school? Is there something going on? That connection is that vagus nerve. So you, you've heard of the, the gut brain axis, the heart the heart gut, the, there's a heart brain axis and a gut brain axis. It's all connected through the vagus nerve. So specifically, and I, Dr. Phillips shared with you his major technique. Um, I like to use, it depends on the patient in front of me always. Um, I, when I say personalized precision medicine, I really mean that. I don't do the same thing with every single person ever. <laughs> um, but I will say that a lot of the emotional and brain function, right? So emotional issues and brain functional issues can come down to, neur to neurotransmitter imbalance as well. So it's just, it just depends on the person in front of you. What is, what is the root cause? Where is a big source? What can, where can we hit them in a way, or what can we do for them that will give the most impact for that particular person in front of me? Um, I will share with you, I use a brain technology and I, that is probably one thing that I use with almost all of my patients. Um, is a specific type of brain technology that gets you back into that parasympathetic space and has um, meditation and has um, the ability, it's research proven to improve brain function and, and improve neurotransmitter balance, improve sleep. And if you can improve someone's sleep, you're going to help them improve their emotional, um, their ability to even handle their emotional traumas, right? Um, I will say from someone who's had a lot of trauma, childhood trauma, all the traumas, name one, I've probably had it, <laughs> been through it. Um, recounting it and retelling this story is often a mistake um, because in the same way that that bear and your response to that is to run, the imagined bear is just as bad. And that's because our brain, again, can't tell the difference. So when you're, when you're reliving a memory, trying to work through it, but you're just telling that story over and over, you're really re-traumatizing yourself. So I try to discourage people from going down that pathway. I don't feel that that's a healthy way for most people. Um, and then I find forgiving is probably, and it's very hard when you've been traumatized by someone else who shouldn't have traumatized you. Um, but understanding that forgiveness is not about the person who hurt you. It's really about letting it go. Um, and it's really for you, not for them. Um, so working with your people to try and get to that place of forgiveness and forgetting. Um, and that's hard to do, but it's doable. And it will improve health uh, long term. All, all the health. <laughs> <laughs> because it's all affected by our emotions. You know, I always tell my patients emotions are, are, um, are, oh my God, Dr. Phillips, what do I say? Energy in motion. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I totally blanked on my own statement. I always tell my patients emotions are energy in motion. And, um, when we're able to release those, those old negative emotions, um, then we, we really can help to balance ourselves and all of our chemistry gets better. All of our biochemistry in our body gets better. All the systems improve. I hope that helped. I don't, I don't know. It, it helped. It definitely. Thank okay. you. I now I feel like I know more about you <laughs> than at the beginning, you know, I guess something of you came out 
to that explanation, especially the the vagus nerve. I never realized how uh, you know with the stomach because I do have those challenges presently. So uh, I, I guess the way you've uh, I think you approach it, and also there's a, a very uh, probably I think your experience uh, uh, of the past, uh, and, you know. They, they teach us something about uh, all of these dimensions of our person and that, and then we can bring this uh, kind of uh, compassion to people that we accompany, plus all the skills that we can bring at the same time to help them through, and through to, to freedom. Eh? So thank you so much. I think that uh, you brush a really, really nice explanation. And uh, do you do consultation? I suppose we'll get to that at one point. Do you do? Yep. You do? Yep. Yeah, okay. So thank gonna, you. That was very helpful. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Phillips, as well. Thank you, Jocelyn. Yeah, so um, let's, believe it or not, we only have a few minutes left. This has uh, just flown by, and we will definitely have uh, Dr. Campbell and Dr. Phillips back again. But I, I did want to take this time to share with you how to connect with the work that they're doing. Um, so I mentioned that... Um, they do have a website um, that is uh, up and would really like for you to be visiting it. Uh, if you go to hacktheweightcode.com, right? Hacktheweightcode.com. Um, I did mention you're going to be able to download that guidebook. Um, in addition to that, um, there is going to be move this stuff out of the way here. Okay, so in addition uh, to that guidebook, uh, you're gonna be able to, if you go to hacktheweightcode.com, uh, you're also going to be able to be the first to sign up for their brand new mini course the Imperial Code for Weight Management. And this is sort of dipping your toes in the water, but this is a special offer. It's an exclusive video training. Uh, you will also have access to the advanced ebook. Uh, also, there's going to be special educational emails sent over time. You also have access to a specially discounted 30 minute private session. Um, with Dr. Campbell, and also special exclusive previews of the brand new masterclass that is coming out soon. And this masterclass is incredible. I've had a sneak peek of it. There is a tremendous amount of information and that's coming real soon. Uh, over five modules with multiple lessons in each module, the advanced ebook we talked about, special educational emails, access to the discounted private session, special exclusive medical test packages. We've been talking about the fact that it's important to do the right testing in order to find out what's going on in your body to determine what the best approach is for you and your custom journey towards health and weight management being part of that. Um, I've signed up for it and uh, I'm going through the process. I don't talk about anything I don't do. So I'm looking forward to getting my test results and uh, going through the program and I've invested in it. And this is important, folks. Uh, I don't know about you, but if, for those of you out there who've been, um, who've been traveling the weight loss merry-go-round, uh, and for me, it's been decades, I have spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on doctors, the stuff that wasn't covered by insurance, on education programs, on the pill of the month or pill of the week or pill of the year, right? On all the magic diets, I had a doc tell me, just go buy some Jane Fonda videos and work with them. And I bought on Golden Pond and Barbarella and it still didn't do anything for me, right? So i I have done what many of you have done, and I'm telling you, it's important. Our health is important to invest in. And if you understand that, you take the time to learn what they have in this program and know that you are worth the investment, your health, your future. 
uh, for you, your families, your friends. Um, it's important for us right now to start investing in our health. And this program is all about all of your health, not just your weight. So um, you'll be learning more and more about this. If you go to hacktheweightcode.com, you're going to get access to all this information. This is not just a one-shot thing, going to come in an email and you're done. You're building a journey and you're building a relationship with two incredible experts. And uh, I, I feel blessed that they've come into my universe. And I think you're going to feel that as well. So please, you owe it to yourself. Check it out. Go to hacktheweightcode.com. And again, we will be having them back. We're kind of going to be following my story and following some of the stories of their uh, patients. And uh, as this program grows and more and more people start learning about it, uh, we'll have more to share with you about what's going on uh, with this revolutionary approach to overall total health and well-being and also um, weight management. Um, so with that, um, I really, really want to thank, first of all, I want to thank Dr. Campbell and Dr. Phillips. It's a Sunday. There are a lot of things you could have been doing. Um, you were very generous with your time, your information. You shared a lot of things that are, I think, in your programs. You're giving people some, some great uh, coming attractions. Um, so we, we thank you for that. Um, truly thank you for your time and for all you do for us and for people out there. Uh, thanks for being here. It's our pleasure. I, I think if there's anything as I listen to Dr. Campbell and hopefully as you listen to me that you realized how passionate we are about helping others and how passionate we are about being truthful about the things that people struggle with and bringing them actual solutions to long-term problems. So we are trying to be the voice of reason in a muddled pond of healthcare. Yes. I couldn't have said it any better. So happy to be here and so happy to have met all of you on the call today. Thank you so much for coming and asking such wonderful questions. Um, I hope that our answers have helped and I hope that you will um, join us further and check out the the page and our book and um, in any other way that I, that I can help, that Dr. Phillips can help, uh, we're here. So thank you, Mike, for having us. Uh, it was an honor and a pleasure. And again, thank you all who joined us. Thanks everyone who joined us here on Zoom today. Thank you everyone who's joining us on Facebook Live. Really appreciate your attention and appreciate your desire to live a better, healthier, happier life. Um, we only get one of those at a time. So we really wanna make the best of it. And uh, the information you gain here tonight, that's not just for you. OK, let's not be stingy about it. Um, knowledge is meant to be shared. Um, and I hope you will be as generous as uh, Dr. Phillips and Dr. Campbell were tonight. Share this information. Share the website, hacktheweightcode.com. Um, the gift of health is the most precious gift you can give yourself and others. So please share this information. And uh, if you need to review any of this, Go to my Facebook page. It'll be there for a while. Um, but if you want to get the whole enchilada, um, there I am talking about carbs again. Sorry about that. Go to hackthewaycode.com. Hackthewaycode.com. Get more information. Please get on the email list. Get your free book before it is only available by purchase. And start diving in little by little with the videos. Uh, you will be so glad you did, and uh, I would be so glad you did because you're all important to me. I love you all. I care about you. That's why we do this show. That's why I do everything that I do um, because I care, and I know Dr. Campbell and Dr. Phillips care, and I know you all care. So thanks again for taking the time, and uh, we will see you next time. And uh, until then, have a great night a great life, great health, and we will see you soon. Thank you.